You have entered Noir Alley, and it's good to have you back. I'm Eddie Muller, your barkeep for the night. Of course, Noir Alley is really a state of mind. In actuality, I'm at Bar 355 in Oakland, California, where I seem to be drinking alone at the moment. This is an appropriate locale for this week's show because booze plays a pretty significant role in the movie we're about to watch, Black Angel, from Universal Pictures in 1946. It's another tale from the renowned master of literary suspense, Cornell Woolrich. Without even doing a tally, I can safely state that Woolrich has been the most represented writer on Noir Alley over the past six years. Under his own name, Woolrich turned out hundreds of short stories for pulp magazines during the 30s. Starting in 1940, either under his own name or his pseudonym, William Irish, Woolrich produced an extraordinary series of thrillers many part of what's known as the Black Series. The Bride War Black, the Black Curtain, Black Alibi, Black Angel, the Black Path of Fear, and Rendezvous in Black. Now, the typical Woolrich plot revolves around people masquerading as someone they're not, racing against time to uncover the truth about a crime. The most famous, perhaps, is Phantom Lady, which in 1944 was turned into a landmark film by producer Joan Harrison, and director Robert Siadmak. Like that film, Black Angel involves amateur sleuths trying to save an innocent man from being executed for a murder he didn't commit. The novel was adapted to the screen by Roy Chancellor, and it represented a big step up for the journeyman writer. He'd produced dozens of scripts for B Pictures during the 30s, his list of credits reading like a travelogue. California Mail, Nurse from Brooklyn, The Road to Reno, Washington Melodrama, Burma Convoy, Bombay Clipper, Mississippi Gambler, even a Roy Rogers Western called simply Idaho. Well, Black Angel was definitely a call up to A Pictures for Chancellor, due entirely to Universal looking to cash in on the unexpected popularity of Dan Duryea. The actor had made his movie debut in 1941 in William Wyler's deluxe production of The Little Foxes. And he followed it up with supporting roles in prestigious films like Ball of Fire and Pride of the Yankees. But his career didn't really take off until Fritz Lang cast him as Dangerous Dandies in a trio of terrific films, The Woman in the Window, Ministry of Fear, and Scarlet Street. In all of them, he was a sleek and suave menace with a predilection, or maybe it was Fritz Lang's predilection, for smacking around the leading lady. By 1946, the fan mail was pouring in, and Universal decided to make him a leading man, not just a sinister supporting character. For the record, I note that Dan Duryea preceded Richard Widmark in launching a career by being an actor audiences loved to hate. His leading lady here is June Vincent, who to this point had appeared mostly in B comedies and musicals. In its promotion of Black Angel, the studio felt it necessary to note that Vincent managed to escape unscathed in her many scenes with Dangerous Dan. Spicing up this noir cocktail are a couple of key ingredients. Peter Laurie plays Mr. Marco, shady owner of a Sunset Strip nightclub where Duryea and Vincent go undercover. And Broderick Crawford is the bulldog cop who's regularly three steps behind the action. Also featured are Wallace Ford and Constance Dowling. She's not in the picture for long, but I'll have much more to say about her after the show. Director Roy William Neal had a deft hand with mysteries, having helmed 11 of the 14 Sherlock Holmes movies made at Universal between 1942 and 46. Logic, of course, plays a big part in the Sherlock Holmes stories written by Arthur Conan Doyle. Logic has no place, however, in tales spun by Cornell Woolrich. Better to just sit back and enjoy the delirious ride. Here is Black Angel. 